Hey all you data vibes weirdos welcome to my channel and today we're gonna play around and make a fun kind of cartoony looking very colorful rainbow trout and this is typically the way I start off with a lot of my fish paintings I love this position and, and the stance of the fish You'll see the foreshortening on the tail here later. There's a nice prominent dorsal fin, adipose fin. And there you see that foreshortened tail. That really makes it look like it's coming at you then. Now, it must be time to do a wash now. Get my fun little brushes out. And now I'm going to do a wet on wet. So, for the background anyway. So I'm going to put this some clean water down. And you can see I'm going to wet everywhere but the fish. The watercolor paint will only go where the water is. Kind of being careful to keep my brush off of the fish. And I always want to keep the pointy end pointed towards the line. It gives us a nice it gives us a nice edge. We don't ever want the back of the brush there. Now here comes my favorite part. Man, yeah, put that in. It looks like fireworks. How that spreads out. And for these washes, when I want it to flow like that. I use the Blick liquid watercolors. They're dye based. And they really flow good. This turquoise is my favorite cool color. And we'll let that play and bleed. Almost each little cell that I put down is doing a little dance with the other one. And these white spots are what makes the watercolors interesting. So leave the white spots. Don't be afraid to leave the white spots. And there it is magically dried. Or maybe I cut away and used a hair dryer. Now we'll put that nice green tint on the top of that. I'm really having trouble with this particular color. That's a sap green. I'm having trouble with it being bold enough for me today. I wasn't sure why. I went ahead and switched to the Viridian, which uh, these have a, these rainbow trout, at least in West Virginia, have a nice deeper green to them, typically. Unless you catch them old fresh stock ones. We don't fool with them too much. I like the wild ones up on Seneca Creek. I've been in there since they were born. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not getting the color that I want, or it's just a little bit too green for me, so I'm gonna add a little purple in. They play well together when you're trying to add some depth. You know, there, I was gonna put the red down. I forgot I wanted to wash it, so it bleeds pretty good here. I want to get some nice, fun, live edges on it. Just it run, gets to run and play and do what it wants. Oh, look at that. It's taking off. And we'll take that all the way back to the tail. Yeah, go back and fill in his face a little bit and his gills. Then I'm going to keep adding some layers. This is how we get depth. Keep doing washes. And I just cover smaller and smaller area each wash I go, working out towards the edge. That's how we'll, that's how we'll build our depth over this painting. And we'll start a little color in there. In this dorsal fin. <coughs> There's going to be a few colors in there. And we'll mix some yellow ochre. That yellow ochre looks wonderful and everything natural. And now you 
you can't see it. I'm going to do the, it's a little bit off camera, but I'm mixing a little bit of orange to the, there was already some yellow ochre up there to do the bottom fins. They have a little bit more orange tint to them. That top dorsal fin gets pretty dark. What I did on them is basically an underpainting, but this will be the final color down here on the pectoral and anal fins. <laughs> Even though it's going to be mostly black because it's just a line that's facing away from you. Oh, I forgot to add a post. There we filled it in. Now, now we'll start adding some adding some depth with some layers. We'll do a gray wash here just to make that make that edge look like it's folding around. And we'll start accenting all the little layers and little pieces of armor he has up there on his face to make up the gills and now some purple starting uh, starting the first layer of the shadow with some some light purple then I'll move back into my gray shadow color and back into some more deeper purple I will blend it I always go back and clean my brush and blend those inner edges a little bit the outside I like to keep them sharp but inside. I like to go over with a damp brush and blend them. So now this is just building layers. These are, even though I'm going to the black, I'm going to some heavier colors, I'm not really outlining yet. I'm just adding some depth by showing you where the creases are. Telling your eye where things start and where things stop. Same thing here. If, when I'm working I'm working on it while it's still wet. I want it to bleed a little bit. We're just adding some depth. Giving a little bit of startup definition to it. There, it just magically dried again. Now here comes the layer going to some real depth. Let's get it nice and bold out there towards the edges. Those are molecules are bending away from you. Stacking up more and more collar. Just adding in little, little dits and dots here and there. I don't. Oh yeah, I forgot the little red on their cheeks too. That that kind of red lateral line extends up onto the face a little bit. Now we we'll add some more different color washes into the. I'm actually grabbing a little bit of purple up there by. The, by the viridian it's up in the top of the palette that you can't see and now we're going to get a nice deep center to that that red side that big old rainbow now we're going to deepen that shadow color always lots of Lots of washes and layers in mine. To, to be patient, take time, be confident. You know how rough these watercolors look. They really demand some confidence sometimes. Especially in these fun kind of cartoony ones. That I that I love doing. They're nice and bold, and and I just know because I've done hundreds of them that they're going to wrap up in a nice bow when I put my big bold outlines on them. Which is what we're starting now. It's the fun part where everything really really starts getting sewed up nice and neat. There, it's finally got an eyeball with a little highlight. Give it some soul. I usually 
to do that first just for my just for my sanity. But I must have forgot this time, left it till last. I'm gonna sit there and stare at something with no eyeball the whole time I'm painting it. And definitely on this on this part when I'm doing this final outline, it's much better to be smooth than it is to be perfect. I'm not worried that my outline is exactly on the edge of the collar or things like that. There's really not even an actual edge to a lot of the a lot of the collars. They all kind of blend and play with each other on the on a smaller scale as you look closer. So for me, it's better for me to be smooth than good, good here. nice and fast and loose. Let's a little bit more soul into the painting. Oh, all the dots now. Those little camouflage dots so the coons and the hawks it's harder for them to see them swimming down in the stream. And uh, see I'm going to stack them up real tight up towards the top and then kind of fade them out and make them farther apart as they get down towards the sides. That's not to show any specific depth or anything, but it does help, but it's actually just how they're patterned. You catch them on the stream, they're real tightly packed up top and spread out on the bottom. Where that darkness helps hide them a little bit up top, and then when they spread out a little bit down there, it lets them show any perspective girlfriend how brightly colored they are lots of dots these rainbows have lots of dots yes I'm trying to stay away from those lighter areas and make it look like a little bit of a highlight like it's glossy and we'll do the jaw and that'll about wrap it up sign it now and uh, thanks for hanging out with me watching my video and uh, hit like subscribe and stop back by sometime check out what I put out new thanks for arting with me today <laughs>